Hi Mac Life fam and a massive Merry Christmas. Welcome to Church Online where you can sit back in your Christmas budgie smugglers, tune out the kids fighting over their toys and ask the big questions like why did Santa think giving a plastic kazoo to little Johnny was a good idea? In all seriousness, it is great to have you with us today. If you haven't already, feel free to give a shout out in the chat and let everyone know where you're tuning in from and who you are tuning in with. We have got a fantastic service ahead of us. Mark McLennan, the other big eagle of the house, is going to be bringing a word in just a moment, and we have worship from the Mac Life Band. But before we go any further, I'd love to read to you a scripture from Luke 2, verse 8 and 10. It says this, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Don't be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Can you imagine being a lowly shepherd in a field and an angel appearing to you and giving you good news that the saviour of the world has just been born? What always gets me about this verse is that the good news isn't just for those who have it all together. In fact, it's quite the opposite. This good news that we are celebrating this Christmas day is for everyone. The King has been born and today we have the opportunity to gather as family and enjoy, although sometimes endure, Christmas meals together and remember the true meaning of Christmas, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we get to celebrate the birth of Jesus today. God, I pray for all of the families tuning in. I pray for everybody tuning in this morning. God, I just pray a blessing over them, Father. Pray that you bless their house, houses, God. Bless their meals. Bless their time together, God. And bless the service that is ahead of us. In Jesus' name, we all said, Amen. Well, we are going to head into a time of worship now, and straight after that, we will be hearing from an absolute legend of faith, Mark McLennan, who is one of the most genuine and faith-filled men you will ever meet. So get expected, look up, lean in, we are just getting started. stars are brightly shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and their repining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh he was born truly he taught us to love one another his lore is love and his gospel is peace and chains shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name christ is the lord Oh, praise 
his name forever. His power and glory. The more proclaim his power and glory.
Good morning, church. How good is it that God so loved the world that he gave his only son in the person of Jesus Christ? And today we get to celebrate the beginning of that whole process. So happy Christmas. I expect most of you have been up for some time now. Um, you might be getting ready all at this point to head out to your first stop for the day. Some of you might be getting prepared for a sumptuous Christmas lunch, or maybe you're still reading the instructions on your latest toy and you're preparing to have some time playing with that and taking it out for a spin. Either way, I'm so glad that you are joining us online this morning to take a little while to just focus in on Jesus, the reason for this season of joy. My message is not going to be long today, uh, but I'm happy to be part of this Christmas morning service here at Macquarie Life. And just to remind you all that God loves every one of you and that the birth of Jesus is perhaps his greatest display of that love. For Sue and I, uh, as our grandchildren have increased in number over the years, we're at eight heading rapidly towards nine at the moment. We've had to change how we do Christmas Eve. So these days we tend to rotate around each of our girls' homes and we sleep over Christmas Eve so that in the morning we get to wake up with our grandkids and watch how each family does Christmas differently. And, and it's so good to see the excitement on your grandkids' faces as they open those presents and to share the joy and the tears and the installation of batteries at that time. And then we both head home for our annual Christmas Day nap, which is our tradition. It's really good. And uh, just as each of our children do Christmas different, I'm also very aware that Christmas can look very different and feel very different, dependent upon the things that are going on in your life. For many, Christmas is not a time of family and lights and cheer and presents. So much of how we see Christmas is really determined by where we're at. If I'm happy, then Christmas is fantastic. The lights are brighter and everything is cheerful. But if I'm going through a tough time, then the feel is very different at Christmas time. It's as if Christmas somehow magnifies all of our feelings. If we're feeling good, then there is no better time than Christmas. But if we're struggling, then Christmas can be like the hardest time. For our youngest grandson, Ollie, this Christmas is his first when he actually knows what's going on. He knows the deal. And so there's a lot of excitement, next level stuff around him today. But for some of you, this day might be your first Christmas without a loved one or your f a Christmas without a job or the first Christmas in a failed relationship. Christmas Day seems to really turn up the volume on your life, whether it's for good or for bad. I remember when I was about eight, uh, I used to ride my bike to school every day, and uh, it was that time of the year when we were doing a Christmas play or a, a Christmas production, and I don't know why, but I was a pirate in the play very Christmassy. And anyhow, I had got my costume ready and I was riding to school and I had my pirate sword in my bag on my handlebars of my bike. And yeah, you probably guessed it by now. My pirate sword went straight through the spokes of the, of the bike. The bike stopped immediately and I just shot over the handlebars and I got pretty banged up. But I didn't get as banged up as what my bike did. It was pretty much a write-off. And like my bike was everything to me. Every day I was on it. So as Christmas moved closer, I was covered in band-aids and bandages around certain bits. And all I wanted for Christmas was a new push bike. I just 
needed a new push bike. And I was on mum's case constantly. Mum, can I please have a bike for Christmas? Mum, I really need a bike for Christmas. Mum, what am I going to do if I don't get a bike for Christmas? But see, we had six kids in our family. Mum didn't work and there wasn't a lot of money to splash around. Now, I want to put that in perspective for you. The year before this, my father had made all of our Christmas presents. So the year prior to this, I received a piece of timber about three inches by two inches back in the imperial days, and it had nails staggered down the edges of the board, and then it was painted a bright red, and there was a little man that looked like a gingerbread man, and you would put him on top of the board and let him go, and he would pink, 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 down the board, and then you'd pick him up and put him at the top, and down he goes. That was my present from the previous year. So I knew that getting a new bike was going to be a little bit of a stretch. Anyhow, on Christmas morning, the whole family was there undoing their presents, and as the presents under the tree were gradually emptying. Not only could I not see a bike, because they are pretty hard to wrap, let alone hide under a tree, but I couldn't see any gifts for me. And everyone else was so busy unwrapping their presents and playing with what they'd received. I remember at that point I felt invisible, as if at that moment they've totally forgotten me. Nobody cares. That was the feeling I had. And at one point, in amongst all of this that's going on, my dad says, hey, will you go down to the shed and get us a cardboard box so we can put all this wrapping paper in it and get rid of the mess? And as I went down to the shed, I thought this was perhaps the worst Christmas ever. And that not only did they not even realise that I had missed out on a present, but it was like they didn't even care about it. And as I opened the door to the shed, there was a bike with tinsel wrapped around the handlebars and a name tag on it with my name on it. And it wasn't a brand new bike, but it was freshly painted, burnt orange, and the chrome was polished, and I knew that my dad had done work to get a bike put together for me to have for Christmas, and it was like the best bike I could have imagined. And you know what? The best part of that moment was not that I'd received a bike. It was that I realised I wasn't invisible. I wasn't forgotten. My parents saw me, they heard me, they loved me, and they'd planned this amazing surprise for me. And as I turned around after touching my bike and, oh, yes, yes, there was my family, and they were all standing there clapping me at the door. Over 2,000 years ago, just before the very first Christmas, that's a bit how God's people were feeling. They were saying, God, have you forgotten us? We need a saviour. We need someone to rescue us from all that we are going through. And they were starting to feel like they were forgotten, that God had forgotten them. And they were wondering, does God even see us? Does he love us? Now, they were expecting that the answer to their question would come in some big important gift from God. They were hoping for a king, someone who would overthrow the ruling powers that were oppressing them. They were hoping for a king who would stop their suffering, a king who would bring peace and give them opportunities for a great life. And of course, God did see them. And he did love them. And he showed that love by way of a very small, unexpected gift. A baby, Jesus. And the rest is history or his story. And so this Christmas, I guess my encouragement to you 
is that God continues to use the birth of Jesus to remind us in amongst the blessing and the joy that we have in life and the hardship and the suffering, the feelings of isolation that we might have, in amongst whatever it is that we are going through or feeling that he absolutely does see us. And Christmas is a celebration of him acknowledging, I see you, I love you, and I will continue to show my love for you in small, unexpected ways. There's a beautiful verse in Isaiah 49 in which God responds to his people who were, again, feeling forgotten and starting to doubt God's love. We seem to do that quite a lot, actually, don't we? And he responds with these words. Can a mother forget her nursing child? And he goes on to say that even if that were possible, I will not forget you. He says, I have written your name on my hand. God is saying, every day I see you, that your name is written on my hand. I have written it there so that I never forget you. I see you and I love you. And I will continue to show that love for you. My hope is that this Christmas you will come to understand that your name is written on God's hand. And just as he continues to show his love to you in small, unexpected ways, that this Christmas will be a time for you to draw near to God, to feel his presence and to feel that love. But more than that, may this day be an opportunity for you to pass on that love to the people that you see and that you love. And in small, unexpected ways, remind them that they are valued, that they are loved, and that their name is written on the hand of God. Now, maybe that means it's time to forgive. Maybe it's time to reconnect. Maybe it's time to make that call you've put off doing. Because although God can and sometimes does the dramatic and the unexplainable, his best work is often seen in ordinary people and everyday experiences. I have your name on my hand. I see you. Church, I pray that you will have a blessed and joyous Christmas day. Have fun with your toys. Hug lots. Remember that you are much loved by the Most High God. And thank you for joining us online for church this morning. Happy Christmas. What a powerful word. I love what Mark said about being known by God. And it's true. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God, saved through Jesus. It says in 1 Timothy 2.4, and listen up. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. For all All in the original translation means all. No one is excluded. The good news was first preached to ordinary men and spread throughout the world. Maybe you've never received this good news, that we can be connected to our Heavenly Father through Jesus. Today is your day. Whether you're in your living room, barbecuing out the back, or driving to the next family gathering, you can be connected to your Heavenly Father. All that you need to do is believe in your heart and call on the name of Jesus. If you would like to get started on that journey, we have chat hosts who would love to connect with you and pray with you to get you started on that journey. So please reach out. Thanks again, Mark, for that profound message. What an encouragement for all of us this Christmas. Incredible.
as we finish up our service today. If you are a regular giver at MacLife, I wanted to extend a massive thank you in this season. We are blessed to be a blessing and I am always encouraged by the generous hearts at Macquarie. The difference that we can make alone is good, but the difference we can make together is incredible. I'm always encouraged by this verse from Proverbs 11, verse 25. A generous person will prosper. He who refreshes others will themselves be refreshed. The giving details are online. Thanks again for your generosity. Okay, the Christmas hat is back on. I hope you've got your Christmas cracker hats on too. It's time to wrap up our service. One quick announcement. We have got an online only service on New Year's Day. We won't be here in person, so please tune in online New Year's Day. Well, that's all that we have time for today. Thanks again for joining us. But before you do open that Christmas cracker joke, just remember, if you haven't heard about Rudolph's roller coaster ride, he held on for dear life. See you next week, church. Have a fantastic Christmas and a fantastic New Year. Be blessed. See you next time.